funny because I think I started uh, loving movies right away. I, I didn't know that I could make a career out of it. Uh, as a young boy, uh, I loved going to the movies. Uh, when movies started uh, get, get getting on television, I would I would watch them. Now, if you remember, they weren't on at regular hours. It used to be you know television shows up to eleven o'clock, the news, and then the movies would start at eleven thirty. And uh, I would I always remember I would wait for my parents to go to sleep, and then I would sneak back downstairs and turn the TV on real quiet and watch movies at night. And so I, I always loved them. And, and uh, I was moving towards a, uh, a career as a, an architect because I could draw. Uh, my math wasn't too good, but, but that's what I thought I wanted to do. Because at that time, there weren't a lot of film schools. Uh, it, no one thought, I didn't think you could actually make a career out of it. I thought it was just this hobby of, of you know, loving movies and television. Uh, and then I, uh, I, I, I found a school that was, uh, that was teaching television at the time and film. And uh, in Algonquin, it was called Algonquin College in Ottawa, Canada. I was living in Canada at the time. And uh, I had already graduated from high school. I was working already for two or three years. So I didn't go right from high school to college. I was already out in the workforce. And, and I loved this, this, this course. And I just thought, it's two years. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do this. And uh, I took the course. And from the very first day that I sat in the very first classroom, I knew that this was it. Uh, any other ideas I had, I knew were gone. I knew that this was what I wanted to do. I loved it right away, and and realized that maybe you can do something you love, you know, for a living, and and took the two-year course at Algonquin College. Did very well in it, much better than I did in high school. I wasn't a very good student in high school. I was a C average in high school, but when I got to to college and I was top of my class, I was in the top three by the time uh, I graduated. So it was very different when you're doing something you love, and that's important. Uh, and that's how I discovered, you know, film and television, and, and that's where I got my first training was, was at that school. Mm -hmm. Everyone's always looking for that one, and it, it's impossible for me. It, it, you know, everyone's looking for the one movie that inspired you, or even I get asked all the time, what's your favorite movie? Uh, that is so hard to do. That, to me, is like, you know, I've got two kids. It's like, what's your favorite kid? I mean, it's impossible. It's one of those impossible questions for me. Uh, I was influenced by, by so many pictures when I was younger. Uh, you know, uh, World War II movies, I think, as a genre, were something that I absolutely loved. I was hooked on the Planet of the Apes series. I mean, I was like the first one in line, uh, you know, every time one of those came out. Uh, I was there for the original Star Wars, obviously. So, you know, all, all of those movies. And, and that's the kind of movie I still like. I still like the kind of movie, uh, you know, that, that entertains the audience. And, and I think those are my first influences. And then when I started going to school, uh, I also became a film critic at the same time on a television show and then started, started to really get an appreciation for the rest of the world and started, you know, the French movies and, and German movies and started to really realize that, that there's a whole different point of view when you, when you leave America in filmmaking. And then became a big fan of, of Luc Bisson and, and other, other filmmakers that were making some, you know, movies that were distinctively different than what they were do making in America. So I sort of started to really love that. And, and they started influencing me as I started going to school. I, I was influenced by the foreign filmmakers. So it's more like genres that I got influenced. But to think of one movie, I just can't do it. I, I've just, <laughs> I've seen so many movies, I can't think of just one. I have a handful of favorites, but to think of one, it's impossible for me. Well, I, I, think, I think one that I saw uh, in film school, actually before I went to college, I, I did a, a little film appreciation course, uh, was Dr. Strangelove by Stanley Kubrick. And, and to this day, that one, I, I try not to think of one film, but that one always pops up, and, and for many reasons. It's amazing storytelling. Uh, visually, it was way, you know, way ahead of its time, beautifully shot, uh, and, and I, just, I just loved everything about it. I loved the way that he mixed the comedy and, the, and you know, this life and death drama of a nuclear bomb, you know, all in one movie. It was, uh, I'd never seen anything like that before. I'd either seen a comedy or a drama. I'd never seen both in one movie. And so that, that probably had a, a big influence, and it, it's definitely one of the ones I love. And then it's, it's filmmakers more than films. You know, uh, Scorsese, I, I love, I love Spielberg. I love these guys that make movies for audiences, and, and that's what I am. I'm an audience member. And so even in the work that I do today in television, I'm always, the first thing I do is put myself as an audience and make that my motivation. 
and and that's just a different type of filmmaking. There's there's guys that do art house films, which is really about them and their lives and what they think and what they love, and that's fine. It's just not the kind of movies that I want to make, and it's not the kind of television I make. I, I really make audience-driven uh, products, so those are the kind of movies that influence me. First of all, you're never going to find a movie that everybody loves, and you're never going to find... Well, it's probably easier to find a movie that everyone hates. That's probably easier. But to find a movie that everybody loves is impossible because you come from a different world than I come from. And so everyone's going to appeal to different movies. Mu music and lyrics appeal to me, obviously, because I grew up when that kind of music, you know, the, the rock videos they do at the beginning was, you know, was, was, I love those, those rock videos. And I was part of that music scene when it was happening. So it appealed to me from, from that point of view because, because there was an age thing that worked for me. And then the chemistry between the two of them uh, was fantastic between Hugh Grant and, and, uh, and Drew Barrymore was really good. And once again, did they set out to make an Academy Award winning movie? No. And, and they knew that when they were making it. They, they set out to make this great little commercial, you know, uh, you know, musical comedy, and they did a great job, and they did it perfectly. There was nothing in that movie I would have changed, you know, and I love those characters, and I wish I could have seen them for another couple of hours. And if you do all that, you've made a good movie. So that's why it's on the list. Well, I, you know, I, I started out as a camera operator when, 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 I, uh, when I left school. Uh, you know, I was in a very small market. Uh, I was in uh, Canada, uh, in Ottawa, so it's not even like Ottawa was a big film market. Uh, in Canada, our two big film markets are Vancouver and Toronto, and Ottawa was about four hours away from Toronto, so I wasn't connected to anything, anything like that. So my, when I first came out of school, I worked right away because I was, you know, connected to a lot of people that were in the business at our school, so that helped. Uh, but it was basically documentaries, industrials, and that and that kind of thing. And so, uh, so, so basically, when I when I came out, I couldn't direct right away. So what I did is I I went into something that I could do, which was be a camera operator. Uh, I I always wanted to direct. I knew somewhere down the line I was going to be a director. But in the meantime, I had a wife and a kid, and I had to I had to make a living. So so basically, I started as a camera operator before I was a director, and uh, and and started that way. Uh, and then and then worked my way up uh, through the camera operating uh, platforms from documentaries to television and then eventually features. And one of the features I did was The Cutting Edge, which was uh, uh, directed by Paul Michael Glazier of Starsky and Hutch fame and uh, starred D.B. Sweeney and Moira Kelly. And, you know, it was a big studio picture, basically, a big studio comedy, uh, comedy drama, I guess, and a sports movie because it was about ice skating and it was about a hockey player that, you know, can't, he's got a blind side, he can't play hockey anymore, so he decides to become a figure skater. And of course, you know, the clash of the two cultures of, of, of figure skating and hockey, which are, you know, obviously two complete different things, and the people that represent them. You know, DB representing hockey and Moira representing a very rich kind of, you know, uh, uh, spoiled girl that was, that no one, you know, could ever partner with. And so I was part of this movie and, and we had a, uh, a great director of photography uh, named Elliot Davis who just pushed me to probably the, the most limits I ever went to as a camera operator. There are certain things you can do with the camera and there are certain things that are very difficult to do with the camera and he found all the most difficult things to do with the camera and of course I was responsible as a camera operator to make the camera move through space the way he wanted it. And so uh, you know, at the time, it was probably really hard, and I probably swore Elliot's name up and down every night when I went home. But then when the picture came out, I realized that he made me do my best work, and I realized what a great director of photography he is because that's what you're supposed to do with people. You're pushing them right to the limit. And, and if you look at the movie, I mean, it's, it's again, a nice little sort of studio comedy, uh, but some of the best visuals probably, I think, in the world of figure skating, I don't think any movie's ever touched it again. It really is... Uh, you know, brilliant, brilliant uh, camera work on the show by Elliot and, and myself as a camera operator. So I'm very proud of that. It's probably the most, the hardest thing I ever did as a camera operator.